Hey everyone, I've got a very special guest today. We've got British heavyweight Ian Lewison. How are you, buddy? Um, Ian's doing good, thank you. Ian's good. Fantastic. And uh, how's the training camp going? Yeah, it's all going great. Everything's um, proving to be just enough time. Everything's falling into place as it is now. Oh, fantastic. I've heard you saying that uh, this is one of the very few times that uh, you've actually managed to get a proper camp with um, enough notice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's one of the few times that I've been allowed adequate timing because they gave me enough time to get everything in preparation. You know what? It's going to show that on the day. Yeah, yeah. So uh, like, um, we're going to see like um, a new and improved Ian Lewis in then. No, 100%. We definitely will. We definitely will see um, Ian that we haven't seen yet. Fantastic. Look forward to that one. So, um, on the 20th of October at the O2 Indigo, which will be uh, mm -hmm. free to air on the Dave channel, you're going up against a deputant, if you like, in Joe Joyce. How do you prepare mm -hmm. for someone like, for um, a deputant? No, but the truth is, you, you don't just say to yourself, oh, you're preparing for a WT. You just prepare for a fighter, regardless of what how many he's had. But the fact is, he's had vast amateur experience. So that in itself is, means that he is very experienced. Yeah, that is true. He has had a very, very good amateur experience. Um, I mean, how do you rate him? Well, I think he's just okay, to you, sure. Yeah, I mean... Because uh, he seems like the kind of fighter that uh, you like because uh, you do like to fight, you, you like to brawl, and he's one of those guys who does like to come forward. Yeah, I love tall guys. I love tall big guys. They're the perfect for my style for our hit. I don't think that he's going to be perfect for me. Yeah, I see. He's uh, very tall. How tall is he? What, is he like 6'6 six, six or something like that? I think he's 6'5, six, standing yeah. on 6'6, six, six, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's a big lad. And... Um, with, uh, with uh, Dave Allen, he said that uh, your fight with Joe Joyce is a more suitable fight for the British heavyweight than it is for Cornish and Sexton. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I reckon definitely 100% it is because I reckon the, the Sexton and the Cornish one, to be fair, the two of them have been inactive and who they are for, it's like nowhere near title level. So for it to be for the title, I think is a bit mad. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and obviously, Dave, he's got his uh, fight up against uh, Lenroy Thomas in a rematch for the Commonwealth. Um, would you be targeting the winner of that fight or Cornish Sexton? No, 100%. I'll, I'll go whichever route presents itself, person. Dave Allen is a fight that um, um, kind of happened, almost happened tw on two separate occasions, but it never did. Yeah. But if, if that fight presents itself again in the future, and obviously, yeah, it's a fight that I would take and I would like to. Yeah, I think from a, a British fan's point of view, that would be a great fight, one that um, yeah. most people would tune in for. Yeah, it would be, yeah. I reckon it would be an entertaining fight. Yeah, yeah definitely. But of course, um, with you beating Joe Joyce, obviously you're going to upset uh, David Hay, if you like, because uh, that's almost like his uh, golden ticket to uh, promote him. Maybe he's going to call you out after Tony Bellew, should he get past Tony Bellew. Yeah, but that's the thing, isn't it? It's just like with anything in life, like, and if you, if you play on the stock market, there's a risk that your stocks can go um, down as well as up. And that's the same thing like in this game. He, he's made an investment in the guy, but it's not guaranteed. And then on the 20th for BC, we will see if he gets a return on his investment. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, do you think maybe that uh, they're putting too much faith in him to put him in straight away with um, like somebody as good and as seasoned as what you are? I'm saying, all I'm saying is that He's going to find out come the 20th that it isn't like the amateurs where he's going to um, let them um, start at the, um, the level which he left there at. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, obviously, like um, one, of, one of your pals, your stable mates, if that's fair to say, Derek Chisora won the weekend. Yeah, he did. Yeah, we, yeah, we train in the, under the same trainer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he won. And uh, he's, Over the weekend. Yes, yeah, and uh, he's got a European title fight against uh, Ajit uh, Kabiel coming up. And uh, how do you see mm -hmm. that one going? Do you know, to be fair, I've never seen that guy fight. Have you seen a fight? No, never. Never. I've never seen them before. No, I, um, I think he's undefeated as far as I'm aware. And mm -hmm. uh, But I think that uh, Derek Chisora, he's um, obviously been around long enough, been in with some good enough opponents mm -hmm. to not have any kind of surprises, if you like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's full of vast array of stars and he's, he's been in with numerous people. So I think, yeah, come 
the day when he fights in November, I think he definitely will be up for the task. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Although, um, I have to laugh, in your uh, press conference with uh, Joe Joyce, you said that uh, you was uh, insulted that he chose you for a debut fight, but you're going to get him back on October the 20th for that. No, 100%. That's how I felt at first. My immediate reaction was that. But you know what? I just take the good with the bad and I'll just take the situation for what it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, um, is it good to be part of the British heavyweight boom that's going on right now? Because there's uh, like, so many people coming through, so many established already. And it seems that uh, British heavyweights is really on the map now. No, definitely. It's definitely firing at the minute and it definitely is a good place to be right now because it allows for good, interesting fights for the British public. And it's, what's good about it now, right at a stage where all of them are fighting each other, it's not a case of like everyone trying to protect their own, running off and saying, oh, I'm not fighting this one or this promoter, I'm not willing to put his fighter in with this one because he's scared of the, the yeah. fighter losing his own. It's a case of now where everyone's fighting each other and that's what's making good boxing for the British public. Yeah, definitely agree. I mean, um, in uh, your last fight with uh, Dillian White, um, I think I think it'd be fair to say Dillian is one of the, or it appears from the outside, he's one of the most avoided heavyweights, but yeah, you, you took that fight at short notice, no problem. Mm -hmm. No, 100%, yeah, I did take it, and, and you know, it never turned out the way I wanted it to, but you know, to be fair, with what I had at the time, my injuries and stuff I've done, I've made a good representation of myself. Yeah, you definitely did. You definitely did. I mean, um, do you keep um, your eye on like the rest of the heavyweight division? Yeah, it's something you kind of help. You kind of help um, doing, but it's just something you will do. You will obviously want to see how what your competition is doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, what do you make of the whole Wilder or Tiz situation? I just think it's crazy because everyone that Wilder seems to be fighting nowadays just tends to everyone that is of some sort of threat to him mm. that you think to yourself, yeah, do you know what? This is going to be a good fight. This is going to be a real test for him. Mm -hmm. It always pans out the fight never happens and this person fills a job to So it's just a bit of a mad situation at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, I know yeah, what's I was definitely looking forward to the provoking one. I thought, yeah, that would definitely be his biggest fight and his biggest test to date. Then obviously that one happened with the drugs and then with the Ortiz one, I was like, yep, yeah, this is going to be a good test for him. And the same thing happened again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I do feel bad for him. But, um, I mean, obviously with uh, Luis Ortiz, he has said that this is all down to um, high blood pressure medication that he didn't put on the form. It does seem uh -huh. a bit fishy from the outside, but we'll have to wait and see how that one unfolds. Uh -huh. and, uh, um, and how do you see Joshua versus Pulev going? How do I see what, sir? The uh, Joshua versus Pulev. Um, I think Joshua should get that one, yeah. Yeah. And uh, how you value? Um, to be fair, um, I'm not really interested in him. I, I think the referee can win that one for all I care. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So what's kind of like are your plans after Joe Joyce? Now, obviously, you're not looking past anybody, but um, like, what's kind of like your future plans? Where do you see yourself going? Do you see yourself going for the British and European and then like take it from there? No, definitely, yeah. That's the route I'd like to go, yeah. I want to get the winner of the Sexton Cornish and then hopefully the Commonwealth and then, like you said, the European. That'd be fantastic. But of course, um, if um, Derek was to be successful, obviously we're not going to see you two in the ring together, are we? Nah, it, it would be a good fight in itself, but mm. because they're both under the same training, now, it's highly unlikely. But the only way it would happen, obviously, if it's for a world or something, then it's something that's unavoidable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, obviously your fight with uh, Joe Joyce, like we said, it's uh, what we are uh, just uh, two and a half weeks away now? Yeah. So um, you've had like plenty of time, and um, it's going to be a good fight. I think a lot of us can agree mm -hmm. on that one. Um, it's um, obviously we, because we don't know too much about Joe Joyce as a pro. Obviously, we don't quite know how to gauge him. Mm -hmm. But um, um, I think it's a fight that we're all looking forward to, and it's good for the fans because, like I said, it's free on TV, which is quite rare. Yeah, and, no, it definitely is. So it's it's going to be a good fight for people to watch, which you'll be on, like you said, on terrestrial telly. So. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Anyone who's interested can watch. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Well, um, uh, hopefully that uh, the rest of your camp 
goes well. Um, when do you finish sparring? Do you finish sparring for, for like a week left to go? or? Yeah, just like another week and then it will be over with all wrapped up. Fantastic. Hey, um, do you have uh, a few sparring partners? No, there are a few. Yeah, there's definitely a few people that I'm using a variation of styles and it's like people I'm using to help get me to prepare for this year. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, then, so uh, good luck with your um, training uh, and obviously good luck with the fight itself. And, uh, you know, we all look forward to that. Do you have any um, a message for your fans? Um, basically, yeah, just stay tuned and watch the fight. It's going to be an exciting one. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you very, very much, Ian, for, for your time today. And um, like I said, we're not going to keep you too long because uh, you've got camp to get on with. Yeah, thank you. Okay, then, buddy. You take care now. Right, cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.